Hello, and welcome to Bits, Bytes, and Barrels 101. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Can, and I'm your resident instructor and expert on the impacts of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. This course is designed to help you, the oil and gas industry professional, the digital professional, the supplier, or the regulator, or the financier, prepare for the coming disruption to the oil and gas industry caused by digital innovations. The front office of the oil and gas business is operations. In the upstream, this is where hydrocarbons are collected and processed, where most of the heavy assets are located. In the midstream, the front office are the pipeline operations, logistics, and distribution. In the downstream, it includes refineries, gas plants, and distribution as well. The front office is appealing because modest improvements in utilization or reliability of the assets, no matter how small, can often generate significant performance and economic gains. Some companies prefer to concentrate instead on the back office. It's here where there are more and more people, more and more compliance activities, cost reporting and record keeping, and more commercial activities, such as collecting cash, trading, and accounting. Many of these activities are human-centric versus machine-centric, and the back office will have few hard assets. Digital needs the business professionals, the domain expertise of how the business actually operates, to inform the structure of the digital solution. So, where do you locate your digital capability? Do you locate it inside IT, inside OT, or in the business, or separately? We need a different kind of method. And this method in the digital world is called Agile. So what is Agile? Agile starts with establishing a time limit for the amount of energy you're going to invest in building something. You then commission your development team to start an iterative development cycle. And they create, after that period of time, a release, often called MVP, or Minimally Viable Product. In comparison to Waterfall, the MVP product will not meet all of the requirements. In fact, it might not meet very many of the requirements, but it will be something. And this creates the opportunity to iterate. So the release is then sent back to the developers to create another release. And this cycle executes. A researcher I quoted in my book put out a fake new asset online. This was a digital version of a new gas plant. The plant wasn't physically there. It was just a SCADA system mimicking the existence of a plant. And it took no more than a few seconds before bots out on the internet that were run by cyber criminals had discovered the new asset online and began trying to attack it to try and understand its vulnerabilities. What's most alarming is that Bad actors are applying and using these new digital tools, like artificial intelligence and bots, to carry out cyber activities. They are equipping their business models with the same digital tools that businesses are trying to use to improve the performance of business. The problem, however, is that people don't iterate that quickly. We get set in our ways. We get used to doing things in a certain fashion. We like to predict processes and what outcome they'll generate. We can then sign up at the start of the year to certain performance targets and expectations based on a comfort level with how things are as they are. And change upsets all of that and puts much of what people have put into place for regularity at risk. Another factor that blocks change, counterintuitively, is success. Managers in oil and gas who are very successful, who are doing something that is successful, are risk-averse. Why put something that's working 
at risk. Digital innovation that could make a positive difference in a successful business unit are often ignored in favor of continuing with the status quo, simply because the status quo is already successful. And in oil and gas, it doesn't take much to be successful. A price movement in oil and gas from $50 a barrel to $55 a barrel generates 10% or more profit without actually having done anything. Here's just a few of the things that humans can do that robots, artificial intelligence, and digital technology cannot do. First, humans have empathy and can connect more meaningfully with other humans. Humans can provide real insight into why things are the way they are. Humans are creative and can come up with new solutions that are fresh, with out-of-the-box thinking. Humans are naturally team players. We work in teams, we compete in teams, and we've been in teams all our lives, from kindergarten forward. So we naturally collaborate and work in teams. Humans have leadership skills to organize and mobilize people and assets to go and follow certain directions. And finally, humans have judgment. It's true, robots and computers have to exercise some kind of judgment in order to have an action take place, such as turning equipment on or off. But there's nothing quite like the judgment of asking this question. Should I shut this plant down or not? Should I close this factory or not? That takes real judgment that only humans can provide.